Well, today's little visit is with permission to a place called Upper Balakuri. Carla, have you seen this one before? Mm, we did a teeny video on it. Well, as we said at the start, this is up about a curry. We had a bit of a malfunction, our steady camera's not working, so we're doing this by hand. So Carl is going to video me while I try and talk you through it. This was the house, the Balakuri house. Huge big house, double floored. And you can see it's had a quite an ornate fireplace. Brick around it. It's had like, looks like a back boiler. The hearth's still there. On the other side, we've got another big fireplace. Again, slightly more modern than what we've seen because they've got bricks around them. And just out there by the holly tree, if you look, Carla, bit of metal, it's part of the old fireplace. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, is that money in the bank thing? Yeah, it but it's be, not. It? It's the old water boiler. <laughs> Nothing had an extension and through here. Lovely little annex here, it's got a lovely little fireplace in the corner and a chimney specifically made for it. There'll be a scullery I suppose. Door to the outside world and then you've got these little... I don't know whether it be stalls or whether it's something that had a lintel on it, you know, like a big lead slate. Um, slate. If it was a scullery it'd be something to in the house, only to do with animals. And it would have filled in a bit as well over the years. Enjoying this, aren't you? <laughs> Here's the you on the video. No comment. <clears throat> the after effects of bird flu. Oh, nice. And when I was here a few years ago, parked up against this wall here was an old rake. Hmm. In your book, and I've um, read your inspirational story about a rake. Yeah. Hay rake. Yeah, yeah. It was inspired by a visit to this place, which actually gave me the, the imagination to write a story. So. Just for folks who don't always know about it, the books have got a lot of stories in them, and they are stories. And they're made up stories that I was inspired by the places I visited. And um, if you look into the book, the stories have always got pictures which are like a painting rather than a photograph. Carla? Mm hmm? Oh, I never noticed that last time. We always see that, don't we? Every time we yeah. come back, we find something else. So this is the old mill. Ah, you can see yes, the, uh, there's a lintel thingy there. There, and that's the some of the workings. It's a bolt wow. there, bolt here. So I think this barn behind me must have been the thrashing barn. Yeah. As well. Yeah, because you've got your little window there. Yeah. You see, which has been filled in. But and then you've got the steps there. Going into it as well. Oh, go and have a look. This will be the barn. Mm. No? Well, yeah, but it just makes sense because this would be the thrashing system. And was it this one that something to do, you said, to do with the cows lying down? This is the cows area. Is that this one? Mm. Ah, right, yeah, it is, yeah. Come back over here and I'll just talk to you a bit more about the mill. I'll tell you a bit of a story. As you on about the, my fictional stories, one of my books features a um, story about the Mill Ray brothers from Foxdale. The very quiet farmers got on with their work, kept themselves to themselves. Their father died, left them some money, so they bought themselves a fancy combine harvester. Um, with a little engine in it. 
the first season they got it, it was a very wet season and the whole of Foxtel couldn't move. So they got together with a lot of farmers and they hitched up the combine to eight horses, dragged them around the area and combined every crop and they saved the day basically and they were the heroes of the time. I was in Foxdale post office getting me some stamps and this guy says, that story about the Miller Ray boys, he says, I, I went to school with those boys. He said, I know them well. I said, it's a complete story. It was never anything <laughs> other than fiction. Oh, I don't care what you say. He said, I went to school with them. And no matter what I said, he was not convinced that what I made up was a story. And what's going to happen, I think, in the future, these stories will become sort of folklore. Um, so people must remember, I have made them up. These people never existed. Unlike you, dear. <laughs> oh, Ray, look! A slide! Go on then, get your bottom in it. The idea what it's for. Unfortunately, I have read your book. Oh, right. So well, it's, it's for rolling turnips. Well, some people haven't, yeah. This is like a little shoot, we think, anyway, for rolling turnips down. You kick a cart here, and uh, they would kick the turnips down into the chute where you'd feed the cattle from. Yeah, uh, it's a bit smaller than what I've normally usually the, the the width of a cart, but this oh. is um, a small one. But it's got the it's clever though, the isn't sides it? there for them to go down. It could be spuds either. There's a whole pile of little um, sheds in this place. Well, well um, situated, I think. If you look across the valley here, me dear. Hang on, don't say it yet till I get that. <laughs> Hold that thought. That way you lay me. Yeah. Yeah. That's another Fulton. Go and tell us again then. That, well, we were both wondering that did it have something to do with the uh, Cornelli mines? Yeah, one, of the, one of the workers like working. Yeah, because it's so close and it's just a, a small little house. Yeah, I'll go and have a look at that in a minute. Yeah. And those things would be up the other way, so they'd be for Harrow in the ground, I think. <laughs> Pied to put the potatoes in. Potatoes? There's the rest of it there, you see. Yeah. That there. It's about to fall down, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't notice that last time. Funny, every time we come back to these, there's signs of decay, isn't it? <laughs> Should we go into the cow house? I think we should. Does it suit me? What can I say that won't incriminate me? Well, I'm carrying your butties, so I'd keep your mouth shut. Yeah, but you're wonderful. wonderful. More like a heifer. <laughs> so? You used to put your cows in there, didn't you? No, that's how you fed, where you fed the cows. Yeah, that's what I meant. So we would have had uh, two, four, six cows in here. What we call the stalls. These lintels are quite intact, really, aren't they? They are. Well, it shows it's not that old, this one. I think they left in the 50s. Yeah, Selsby's, where the people farmed it. What Carl is standing on is the... Uh, it's called the cow bed, and then behind that would be the grep where all the poo went. And that was my job in the winter time to gather it up in a barrow and tip it in the midden. Hallelujah. Look at that up there. What would that fit before? That little handle. Because usually those are for tying your things, but the opposite way round. They'd be strangling it up there, wouldn't they? But, uh, yeah. Don't know. The people you know have long since gone. Yep. This would have been two levels, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Storage upstairs. Yeah. And cows downstairs. And they uh, chuck it down through a hole here to feed the cows in the winter time. Hmm. Go and have a look. No, it looks unsafe. You want to kill me? Well, good video, isn't it? 
tell you what, why don't you crawl in there? There's a little pigsty. That's no way to talk to me. I'm doing well today. Little cow house, heifer and a pigsty. Full of compliments for my darling. I've this still is, got your butties. This is pre-Valentine's Day. Hey, look. A hook. Oh, hey. Bloody stinks. What's in there, Pebbles? The tree up there is the old holly tree. In the spirit world. Then we're upside here, this barn in here. See the old beam rafters still there? What's left of them? Not the double floored one. This would have been a thrashing barn with the um, machinery outside, but there's obviously all the machinery has been taken away. There's your window up there, we've still been able to watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, the old latch thing. Still there. You could spend hours finding all sorts, couldn't you, really? We probably don't spend long enough, believe it or not. <laughs> Folks are going to say, give us a break. You're always there. You're always out every day. It does seem like it, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, the wooden door's still there. That's in your book. Yes, I noticed that. When you're out and about, you'll see these doors occasionally. They were always painted with red or green. It was lead-based paint. You couldn't do it these days. But it lasted for years when it was put on and protected it well. Oh, look. I found some machinery. The old gates must have hung on this for years and years and years. It's a conflagration of machinery here, Carla. Hmm. Looks like an old binder, an old car, an old plough. 70 acres, there's a little farm. It's farmed, as you said, up to the 50s with the Salisbury's. Two brothers, apparently. <coughs> so, so it's been abandoned about 70 years, I guess. Well, you know this little ruin is on the, between two footpaths. If you go along the old wherry line, this one goes up and another one comes back down. And this is private property. We've been given permission to come and have a look and do a bit of video. Don't take it for granted. It was a nice walk, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Along the up and back down again. It was a nice day. You come to a place called Canelli Mines or Townsend's Mines or Jones's Mine, depending on which book you read. It's an operation up until 1849. I called Gross was the manager. And lead was what it was producing. What are your thoughts on day, darling? Mm. Up here is called the Balakuri Road, and this is the farm that's called Upper Balakuri. Mm. What's that story about that guy off Facebook? Um, it is. Who was it? Across the valley, he used to watch over. Well, we said to see the mines working from Greba. Or an awful place. Mm. In Greba. Well, I'm looking here this morning. I can't see Greba from the mine, so. It's a long way away, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure which mines it meant. Mm. Mm. 
13th of February 2023. Here you are wearing me again with more fountains. Gosh, I'm a lucky girl. Well, you just think how other girls are going to hold themselves back. <laughs> it's my day tomorrow. Mmm. Cards galore, I think. That's why I opted to work on Valentine's Day so I didn't have to do anything with you. <laughs> I'm joking. I might let you stay with me tonight, tomorrow night. Really? Yep, in the garden. Yeah. Getting close to the house though. <laughs> So peaceful, I always say this, don't I? You do? It's just amazingly peaceful. And then you start talking. 